Is ATSC3 a hybrid OTA or is it OTT? Is it coming for streaming? Is it coming for broadcast? How how you know, how do they work together? Well, let me just give the tech um, and then I'll let Carrie and Scott talk about the cool things that they're doing with it. Um, so from a technical point of view, if you just want to watch TV, a lot of times we get the question is, oh, do I need a, do I suddenly need a broadband connection in order to watch TV? No, no, you do not. Um, you can watch ATSC 3.0 television just the way you've always ever watched television. You don't have to connect your television to the internet. You don't have to have a broadband plan. However, if you do, then ATSC 3.0 can be married nicely with your broadband connection and it can do all kinds of tricks um, when you combine the two. And what really happens is, is that you wind up with these hybrid services. So imagine, Rob, you're watching whatever program it is, you're watching on linear TV, you, 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 you sort of tune in. And the first thing that it says to you is, do you want to start this program over? We noticed you turned in 12 minutes late. Wait a minute, I get to watch on demand on, on linear TV over the air, really? So you go, yes. And suddenly the program just starts over from the beginning. And you're watching that and then you have an option. Do you want to return to live TV? Sure, go ahead. And you can say, oh, I'm going to channel up down. I'm going to do all the different things that I always ever did with TV. What the viewer doesn't know or frankly care is that the minute you clicked yes to start over TV, you switched seamlessly from the over the air linear feed coming in on your antenna to an over the top streaming feed coming in off of your broadband connection. But the coolest thing about it is that the user experience is seamless. And so you're, you're bopping between streaming and linear without even knowing. And it really allows the broadcasters suddenly this no, new way of doing things. So you can now you're going to be pausing and rewinding and doing trick play. Um, obviously, you can't fast forward on a football game that's live because we don't know what's going to happen next. But when it comes to you know, a, a wide variety of things that you can do, Hey, you're watching, you know, something on scripts and you just wanted to catch the weather. So you pull up the button and say, I want to watch the weather now. Boom, there it is. And we had this live on the air on display at the CES show um, in Las Vegas in January. And this was just what's on TV. We weren't, this was not a canned demonstration. This was what's on. So I'll turn it over to, to Carrie and Scott. But from, yeah. from the technical point of view, as Carrie points out, the fact that 3.0 is an IP based standard doesn't mean that you have to have an internet connection, but if you do, then these hybrid um, scenarios and features are possible. First off, your, your lean back television experience that's super easy to use, you know, uh, and everybody understands how to use a TV, that's not going away. But if you want to be engaged, we can create ways for a consumer to be further engaged in the programming. When, think of the words win, play, vote, buy, be better informed all through your remote, remote, remote control, and then business models that support all of those things along the way. So the, the viewer and advertising experience is going to be very interactive or could be very interactive, uh, much like the streaming experience. And, um, and, and, I, I, and, and also when it comes to um, revenue creation and uh, addressable advertising, the same things that that everyone here on this this call and listening to this call already understand about addressable advertising, and uh, um, it, it's going to be available to over the air television as well. First off, your your lean back television experience that's super easy to use, you know, uh, and everybody understands how to use a TV. That's not going away. But if you want to be engaged, we can create ways for a consumer to be further engaged in the programming. With, think of the words win, play, vote, buy, be better informed, all through your remote, remote, remote control, and then business models that support all of those things along the way. So the, the viewer and advertising experience is going to be very interactive or could be very interactive, uh, much like the streaming experience. And, um, and, and, I, I, and, and also when it comes to um, revenue creation in, uh, addressable advertising, the same things that, that everyone here on this, this call and listening to this call already understand about addressable advertising. And uh, um, it, it's going to be available to over the air television as well. That's where I get excited is, is where this enables new consumer experiences, right? Um, and new is a little bit of a misnomer. Um, you know, one of the ways 3.0 could be used is just more channels, right? Back to the multicast point. 
um but it can be it can be enabled in in personalized ways like if i know it's you i can serve things to you to madeline's point i can do a lot of the things that we can do in ctv today so when we look at ctv ctv is a little bit of a um is a little bit of a petri dish right for what we can do on television and we just launched 25 local fast channels right um their local news fast channels in, in 25 of our markets and we'll launch the next 25 and whatever um really easy to imagine a world in which a dedicated news channel is one of the first channels you click down when you were watching a local channel. Um, there used to be um, a long time ago, Cablevision launched something called the MSG Metro channels in New York. And it was this package of three channels. One was a dedicated local news channel. One was a dedicated local traffic channel. Um, and appreciate, yes, that's before the days of Google Maps. Um, and I think the other one was a dedicated local events channel. Uh, but these types of bespoke local channels, they are, today the only place you could do them would be fast. Um, but to be able to have them on fast and over the air um, starts to become a more complete broadcast picture, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think very soon you're also going to see some temporary channels come up, pop-up channels, uh, where, uh, mm -hmm. where a channel doesn't exist today but it exists tomorrow and it exists for the next 30 days because it's all about the Iowa State Fair. Um, and then it goes away. Uh, I think you're gonna see business models and channels like that um, start happening on over there television.